This is free response question three from the 2024 AP Calc ABBC exam. It's part of the no calculator section. The depth of seawater at a location can be modeled by the function h that satisfies the differential equation given here, where h of t is measured in feet and t is measured in hours after noon, so noon is at t equals zero. It is known that h of zero equals four. Part A says a portion of the slope field for the differential equation is provided. Sketch the solution curve, y equals h of t, through the point 0, 4, which is that initial condition that was given to us. So down here on the slope field, we will plot the point at 0, 4, or actually, it's already plotted there for us, so that's great. Now we just have to sketch the solution curve passing through this point. So sketch a curve through the point that follows the directions as indicated by the slope field. Hence, the solution curve should look something like that. So that's the solution curve for part A. Moving on to part B. For t between 0 and 5, it can be shown that h of t is greater than 1. Find the value of t between 0 and 5 at which h has a critical point. Determine whether the critical point corresponds to a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither. And of course, we must justify our answer. So in looking for critical points, we consult the derivative, which is given to us, dh dt. First, is there anywhere that this derivative doesn't exist? The answer to that is no. Cosine is a nice continuous function on all real numbers, and we don't know anything about the function h, which is present in its own derivative. We don't know anything about the function h that would suggest it doesn't exist somewhere either. So the derivative exists everywhere for our purpose. So then we just have to ask, where is it equal to zero? Those will be the critical points. When is this expression equal to zero? Well, h minus 1 is certainly never equal to 0 because it was given to us that h is greater than 1, at least on the relevant interval, which is between 0 and 5. h of t is greater than 1. So h minus 1 cannot be 0. Thus, the only way this derivative will be 0, and thus we get a critical point, is if cosine is 0. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2, and since the input is t over 2, this function will be 0 when t is equal to pi. That way, the input will be pi over 2. If you think back to the unit circle, that gets us up here where the x-coordinate cosine is 0. So it's at t equals pi. There are, of course, infinitely many other values of t that would make this equal to 0, but that's the only one that's in the interval between 0 and 5. So there's our reasoning written out. The only critical point on the interval is at t equals pi. Now we have to determine if this critical point is the location of a maxim in or neither. To do that, we'll use a quick sign chart. Here's the critical point at t equals pi. What's the sign of the derivative to the left of t equals pi? Well, think about the unit circle. If t is between 0 and pi, then the input, t over 2, is going to be at this part of the unit circle, in the first quadrant, where the x-coordinate is positive. Thus, the derivative, seen here, will be positive, because 1 half is positive, h minus 1 is positive, and cosine, as we just said, is positive. That's when t is between 0 and pi. Once t passes pi, the input, t over 2, passes pi over 2, and so now we're over here, where x is negative, and so the sign of the derivative would be negative. Hence, the function switches from increasing to decreasing, so at t equals pi, we have a relative maximum. And there that reasoning is. There's a relative max at t equals pi because the derivative, dh dt, switches from positive to negative, we might say, at t equals pi. That completes part B, so let's go ahead and finish with part C. Use separation of variables to find y equals h of t, the particular solution to the differential equation that was given with the initial condition h of 0 equals 4. So we'll take this differential equation, separate the t's and the h's, and then integrate, and then we can use the given initial condition to solve for the arbitrary constant and get our particular solution. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by dt and divide both sides by h minus 1 in order to separate the variables. Then, on the left side, 
we're going to have 1 over h minus 1 dh. And on the right side, we're going to have cosine of t over 2 over 2 dt. Now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. On the left, the integral of 1 over h minus 1 is just the natural log of the absolute value of h minus 1. And on the right, integrating cosine of t over 2 over 2, we're going to have sine of t over 2. If we took the derivative of this, the chain rule would give us that 1 half that we have here. And then let's imagine that we gathered all the arbitrary constants on the right. So this is it. Now we can go ahead and use our initial condition to solve for c. That initial condition was that h of 0 is equal to 4. So plugging that information into this equation, we have the natural log of h is 4. So this is the natural log of 4 minus 1, or simply the natural log of 3. And this is equal to sine of t over 2, but we're plugging in t equals 0, so that's sine of 0 over 2, and sine of 0 over 2 is just 0. So we're really just left with the arbitrary constant c. And of course, the absolute value with the natural log, we don't need that because 3 is positive. So c is equal to the natural log of 3. So then back in this original equation where we had c, we can just go ahead and replace that c with the natural log of 3. Now we're trying to solve for h to find the particular solution. What is that function h satisfying this differential equation? So we're going to exponentiate the left and the right sides in order to get rid of that natural log. So on the left, we're going to have e to the natural log of h minus 1. And of course, the whole point is that the e and the natural log cancel out. So why don't we just go ahead and write the absolute value of h minus 1. And then on the right, we're going to have e to the power of everything that's on the right. So e to the sine of t over 2 plus the natural log of 3. But by our exponent rules, e to the sine of t over 2 plus the natural log of 3 is the same as e to the sine of t over 2 times e to the natural log of 3. But e to the natural log of 3, of course, is just 3, because e and ln cancel out. So this is just e to the sine of t over 2 times 3. So then to get rid of the absolute value, we could say that h minus 1 equals plus or minus 3 times e to the sine of t over 2. So is it the positive solution or is it the negative solution, plus or minus? minus. Well, we know the initial condition gave us a positive value for h. h of 0 equals 4. So in fact, this must be the positive solution. It's not plus or minus, it's just plus for this particular solution. Finally, we can add a 1 to both sides to finish solving for h. So finally, we have h equals 3 times e to the sine of t over 2 and plus one. And if we want to go ahead and emphasize that this is a function satisfying this differential equation, we can write h of t equals this. And that completes our solution to free response question three from the 2024 AP Calc AB BC exam. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. If you want a little bit more practice, check out my 10 hours of AP Calc FRQs in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count with calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together, like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.